And so today we're going to speak about Elohim's army before the gospel was repent for the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. Okay, so if we come a part of that kingdom, you know, we have to know that Yahushua is our king, but he also, as, as most kingdoms, as all kingdoms actually, you know, they also have an army. Yeah. You know, and this army is for the protection of the kingdom, amen? Amen. You know, and so today we're going to talk about Elohim's army. And in case, in case you were wondering, you know, Elohim wants you. You know, he uh, he's looking for, for folks who want to enlist. You know, he's not going to force you, but, you know, if you want to enlist, he, he'll be more than happy to have you. You know, for that, for um, any, of, any of you who've been walking this walk for a way, you know that it is, you know, that we do have an enemy. You know, and this enemy um, will we'll come up against the children of the kingdom, amen? You know, so we need some troops on the battlefield to help those who can't help themselves, to fight for the kingdom and for those who, who are uh, too weak to fight for themselves, amen? You know, so we're going to um, enter into spiritual boot camp today, if you would, all right? You know, we're going to enter into this spiritual boot camp. You know, now this message started out, you know, just, you know, kind of, you know, not necessarily short and sweet, but somewhat short and sweet, you know, and it just manifested into this where it is now today. So I don't know how much of this we're going to get through, you know, but um, to y'all be the glory, we get where we get, and if we get it all, hallelujah, if we don't, then we'll pick up where we left off, amen? Amen. All right, so, um, spiritual boot camp. Okay, so now, now that we're entering into the spiritual boot camp, the first thing that, that I want you to know and understand is that Yah, that the army of Elohim is looking for warriors, not warriors. You know, so if you're gonna if you're gonna enlist in the army of Elohim, then you need to, even if you come in a warrior, then by the time you leave this boot camp, you should be a warrior. You know, when you leave this. When you leave this boot camp, you should no longer be a warrior. Amen? You know, so when we don't want worried soldiers on the field. You know, worried soldiers get not only themselves, but everyone around them hurt. You know, so we want we want to be warriors, not warriors. You know, if, if Yah has 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 um, is with us, then who can be against us, right? You know, so we have nothing to worry about. He has told us that we had a victory, amen. He has shown us in his word. You know how he's given the victory to others. Amen. You know, so we can trust on, we can trust in his word and stand on his word. You know, and be warriors and not warriors. Amen. All right, now, you know, us prayer warriors, those who enlist in in the uh, army of Elohim, you know, you're gonna have to get some praying in. You're gonna, you're gonna have to. That's a part of the way we war. We're prayer warriors, amen? And we fight our battles on our knees. We're the only, we're the only army that, that, uh, that go into battle on our knees, you know, where others may run in and, you know, and do what they do. Those are the army of Elohim. We fight our battles on our knees, amen? You know, this is, this is, what, this is what our platoon looks like, you know? We, we, enter in, we enter in on our knees and we get the job done. You know, now, mind you, the task ahead of you is never as great as the power behind you. And you have to know and believe that with everything, with everything that's within you. Then you can be strong in the Adonai and in, in his mighty power, you know. You know, you have to know that what's ahead of us is, is not greater than the power that's behind us, you know. That's what's in us you know, is, is much more powerful than that which is in the world. I may. You know, and also, I want, I want to encourage you, you know, in knowing that you are not at war alone. You know, you're not at war alone. So many people come into this walk and they try to do this thing alone. 
you know, and they get into these battles and, you know, and, and they want to be like Rambo and they just, you know, want to go and they go off alone and do this. this. That's not how this works. We would not be successful as the army of Elohim if we're just, you know, all lone soldiers. You know, scripture teaches us one that will put a thousand to flight, two will put ten thousand to flight. Well, then what would a whole crew of us do? Amen. Amen. You know, so we see that there's strength in numbers, you know. Uh, divided we're weak, united we're strong. Amen. Amen. All right, so we need to suit up in the full armor of Elohim. So, so this boot camp is, uh, is within this boot camp, we're going to learn about, you know, our armor for every soldier, you know, that I know of have some type of uniform, I mean, you know, and the army of Elohim is no different. We have, we too have a uniform and it's the, it's the armor of Elohim, speaks to the sword of the spear, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, boots of peace, you know, this is, this is our garb, this is what we wear, you know, this is what we wear as we go out on the battlefield, I mean. You know, so we're going to need to acquaint ourselves with these things. Okay. We're going to start off with uh, Ephesians 6.10. It says, uh, Finally, my brother, be strong in Yahushua and in the power of his might. You know, so those of us who enlist in the army of Elohim, we do need to be strong in Yahushua and in the power of his might. You know, so just... What is being said here? What is what is power and what is um, what is the power of his might that's being spoken of? Well, when we look in at the Strong's, um, we find that the Greek word is kratos, number 2904, and it speaks to might or strength. You know, so actually he's saying, uh, finally, my brother, be strong in Yahushua and in his might or his strength or in the might or strength of his might. Well, what is might? Might is iskus. In um, Greek, and it's 2479, meaning ability. So what we're actually being told here is to be strong in Yahushua, you know, and in his, the might or strength of his ability. Mm -hmm. See, so you don't have to worry about what you can do. Amen? You don't have to worry about, you know, how strong you are. Right. You don't have to worry about, you know, your limitations. Mm -hmm. Because we're called to be strong in Yahushua and his in his strength in the power of his strength in his strength in his might of his ability and we know that he can do all things amen Hallelujah. you know so here it is you know so I want you to get this from the from the spiritual boot camp you know that first of all when you join the army of Elohim you know you have to be strong in Yahushua and in the strength and might of his ability you know don't be trusting in your ability. So that means it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter, you know, how outnumbered you may be. Because you're not dependent on your ability or even our ability. You know, but we're to be strong in the, the might or strength of Yah's ability. Amen? Amen. All right. So, you know, everybody got that? Yeah. All right. So now, now that we have that understanding, you know, Ephesians 6, 11 teaches us that we are to put on the whole armor of Elohim, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay, so this is what we're, uh, we've come to talk about. We're, talk, we're going to talk about this armor of Elohim, you know, that we'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, what are these wiles, and who's the devil? Okay, so here it is. We look up the word miles, wiles, rather, and it's met, methodia, Number 3180 in the Strong's, and it speaks to cunning arts, deceit, or trickery. It's from a compound of metha, you know, which means accompaniment, and hoduo, which means to travel. You know, so hereby we learn that, you know, this deceit is speaking of cunning arts or deceit or trickery that will accompany us while we travel. And now, uh, and it comes from the devil. Well, who's the devil? This word devil is diabolos, number 1228 in the, um, in the Greek Strong's, and it speaks to a traducer. 
A traducer is one that speaks badly or lie about someone so as to damage their reputation. You know, I want you, I want you to remember that. You know, Diabolos, which is translated as devil, you know, this is one, this is our enemy, you know, uh, which send these wiles at us, you know, speaks to, the devil is a traducer. He's one that speaks badly or lie, lie about someone as to damage their reputation. You know, so um, when people are speaking badly about you or lying about you so as to damage your reputation, you know, the devil is using them. Can you see that? You know, so hereby we learn the purpose of the armor, and that is to protect us from the devil's deceit and trickery that will accompany us while we travel the way of Elohim. You know, Yahushua HaMashiach, our Messiah, has come and exemplified the way of Elohim that leadeth unto eternal life. Amen? Now, as we enter onto that path, we, 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 must, uh, we need to know that the enemy is going to come up against us. You know, and he's going to come up against us, you know, with wiles, with deceit and trickery that will accompany us while we travel. See, we need to understand that the devil's deceit and trickery will be with us as we're traveling the way of Elohim. This is real important. See, because, you know, we don't, we're not the ones that go running into battle, but the battle runs to us. You know, the enemy attacks us. We're not going out attacking anyone. They come and attack us. Amen? You know, so we need to understand that the devil's deceit and trickery will come at us while we're traveling the way of Elohim, even though we're not bothering anyone. Even though, you know, we may be in our own lane, so to speak, doing, doing our thing and doing Yah. You know, we're just doing Yah. You know, we have to know and trust and believe it will happen. The devil will come at you. You know, uh, now here it is. You know, I, I, I think of the time back when I was, when I was fasting, I was doing my 40-day fast, you know, I, here it is. I'm trying to get closer to my L, you know, for my spiritual edification. And, Hallelujah. you know, and, and folks, you know, start talking bad about me, you know. And, you know, what, who am I trying to be, Moses or, or Yahshua? I'm trying I'm holy, think I'm holier than now. And I'm like, what the heck, where is this coming from? See, I understand that that was just the devil. You know, that's just the devil. Instead of encouraging one, you know, in the way of Elohim, the devil, he does just the opposite. He talks bad. He talks bad about him. Sometimes they even lie on him. You know, we have to know and understand that we are soldiers in the army of Elohim. And we soldiers, we're fighting against guerrilla warfare. See, we're not fighting against um, your normal warfare. We're fighting guerrilla warfare, which is a form of irregular warfare. It's not like the normal warfare that you see on TV, you know, where, you know, you have you have two armies on the battlefield. One is one is um, before before um, on one side and one is on the other side and they're looking at each other and they're getting ready to engage in combat. Well that's not quite the type of warfare we're in. We're in more more so guerrilla warfare, which is a form of irregular warfare, whereas armed civilians carry out ambushes and sabotage and hit and run tactics. So in other words, your enemy could be right next to you. You know, you could be thinking your enemy is just another citizen in the kingdom of Elohim, my man. You know, but what you won't realize is that they can actually be the enemy. I mean, you know, see, see, this is guerrilla warfare. You know, see, the enemy don't play fair. This is guerrilla warfare. We, we can be right in the midst, you know, of our enemy and not even know it. You know, because, you know, they have civilians clothes on, you know, so they just look like everybody else. You know, but next thing you know, they're carrying out ambushes and sabotage and hit and run tactics. Now, oftentimes, guerrilla warfare is used to wear the enemy down, that they may become more vulnerable to a large-scale attack. You know, so you know, a lot of times they'll just keep coming at you, coming at you, coming at you just to wear you down. You know, and then they come in for a large attack. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, so we have to be careful. We have to be careful concerning that. Amen? Yeah. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit more about spiritual warfare, you know, in the sense of exposing the enemy. You know, we need to know who our enemy is. Amen? You know, so we, we're gonna uh, we're gonna try to expose the enemy today. 
All right, so to withstand this guerrilla warfare, we're given spiritual armor. Now, saying that we're at war and we'll be constantly under attack, let us seek to understand our standard issue gospel armor. You know, we need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of what we're going to be wearing. Amen? Uh, first, we must understand the differential between armor and weaponry. See, because, you know, some people, some of the novices, they don't understand the difference between armor and weaponry. Armor is simply a protective covering and not a weapon. I mean, it doesn't harm the enemy. It only protects us from the devil and those that he uses to reduce um, to introduce us, that is, those who he uses to speak badly and or lie against us so as to damage our reputation. It doesn't harm them. It just protects us from them. You understand? You know, so we need to understand our enemies for we'll never be um, proficient at defeating the enemy if we're ignorant, ignorant of who they are and how they operate. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so we're going to look to Scripture and see, you know, who our enemies are and how we can come up against them. Well, Ephesians 6, 12 tells us, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. You know, now, this doesn't tell us who our enemies are, but it surely tells us who our enemies aren't. Amen? Amen. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, and I see so many people who want to who wanna, um, get down in the physical. Yeah. You know, they want to take up arms, you know, and they want to fight this physical war. But we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood is in the physical realm. Okay. You know, yes, the devil may be using that person. But, you know, Yah does not want you to go and kill that person. You know, yes, the, you know, the devil may be using that person to try to kill you. But that Yah still doesn't want you right. to kill that person. Instead, he wants you to fight the true enemy. And it's not the flesh and blood. Amen? Amen. You know, so... Uh, to withstand this guerrilla warfare, um, I already did that, didn't I? Okay, so what we do wrestle against is principalities. You know, that's the first one that we're told. Principalities. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. So we wrestle against principalities. What is a principality? Well, when we look this word up in the Greek is arche, number 746, and it means commencement. It means chief. You know, so it means something, you know, that's the chief of something, that's, you know, that's the, the biggest and the baddest. It also means commencement, it means it's the first. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's the first in, in order. Now, it comes from akomai, you know, number 756, meaning to commence. You know, so uh, speaking of the chief things that started whatever. You know, like Satan is the father of lies because he is, he was the first one to lie. Amen. Okay, so he's the chief principality over lying. You know, he was the first, but he certainly wasn't wasn't the last. Amen. Okay. Now, from it, um, this this word can be traced from the Hebrew to tequila, number eighty four sixty two, meaning to commence, which comes from kalal, a verb meaning to bore or to profane. Okay, and so what I want you to see is that, you know, a, a principality, you know, is the chief or commencement of something that either bores or damages us or profanes us in the eyes of our, of our El. You know, so, hence Satan, you know, as I said before, he's, he's a principality. He was the first one to stray, so he's like, he's like the chief of the principalities because he was the first one to stray first one astray, you know, but everyone, you know, is not fighting against the same principalities, I mean, you know, you can have different principalities that you're battling against in your life, you know, and they'll always be, be able, you'll be able to tell them because they'll be the first things, um, they'll be behind the first things that caused you to stray mm -hmm. from the will of Elohim, mm -hmm. okay, to better understand principalities, let us consider uh, one that um, the nation of Israel, you know, uh, one of the uh, principalities that the nation of Israel fought with constantly, and that's idolatry. <coughs> you know, idolatry attacked Israel um, even from the very beginning. When we go to Genesis 31, uh, and we read 26 through 32, we see that idolatry was there from the beginning. Let me have my first reader read Genesis 31, 26 through 32, please. 
And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done that thou hast stolen away unawares to me and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly and steal away from me and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs and with tabre and with heart? And hast not suffer me to kiss my sons and daughters, thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the Elohim of your fathers spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. And now, though you would needs be gone, because thou sore longst after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob being concerned and said to Laban, because I was afraid. For I said, peradventure, thou wouldst take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brother discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. Okay, so here it is. We see, you know, this is before the family is even complete, you know. We see that Yaakov, you know, is dealing with idolatry. You know, we have to keep in mind that yes, Yaakov was a, was a son of Abraham, but his wives, you know, they were son, they were daughters of Laban, and Laban was an idolater. You know, and so they grew up, you know, in idolatry, and so they trusted in other Elohim other than Yahuwah Elohim. Amen. You know, and so here it is, so much so that we see when they're leaving, you know, that Rachel. She steals her father's Elohim. You know, and so Yaakov, not knowing, you know, when he comes to retrieve him, he says, Whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. You know, he didn't know that Rachel stole it, and we see later on that Rachel dies early. Amen? Amen. You know, so, but what I want to point out is the idolatry that was there from the beginning. You know, also, um, you know, we, if we look at Exodus 32, 1 through 4, we see idolatry, you know, following the, the family along. Uh, let me have my next reader read Exodus 32, 1 through 4, please. And when the people saw that Moshe delayed to come down out of the mount, the people scattered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses... The man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graven tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And he said, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Okay, so here it is. We see shortly after Israel has been birthed as a nation, birthed into a nation, we see the principality of idolatry is still an issue. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Still an issue. You know, and then if we go to first Kings twelve, twenty six through thirty, it says, And Jeroboam said in his heart, you know, now Jeroboam was the first king of the northern kingdom, you know, or the northern, northern ten tribes. He says, now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go, go up to do sacrifice in the house of Yahuwah at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Adonai, even unto Rehoboam, king of Yahudah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Yahudah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much. For you to go to Jerusalem, behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Israel. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? And he set the one in Bethel, and he put the other in Dan, and this thing became sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. Now, this is when Israel and Yahudah split. And the first thing that comes of it is, again, the principality of idolatry. It's no wonder that um, the first of Yahuwah's commands to Israel was, Thou shalt have no other Elohim before me. You know, now also, 
you know, not to make Yahuda sound like, you know, um, like they wasn't a part of this. You know, 1 Kings 14, 21 through 24, Rehoboam was the first king of the southern kingdom, you know, after the split. You know, and it says that Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Yahuda. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city of which Yahuwah did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Na Naamah and Ammonitus. And Yahudah did evil in the sight of Yahuwah. And they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. For they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree, and there were also sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which Yahuwah cast out before the children of Israel. So this is when the kingdom split, and Israel began to have two kings, and immediately afterwards, both kings of Israel and Yahuda gave themselves over to the principality of idolatry. Now, many think to themselves that idolatry isn't an issue for them, you know, seeing that they're uh, not bound to any idols. But this principality also has a spiritual side as well. And so we need to know the spiritual side. You know, and it's found in Colossians 3, 5. It says, Mortify therefore your members which are yeah. upon the earth, Hallelujah. fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So here it is. We see that spiritual idolatry is covetousness. Well, what is covetousness? When we look up covetousness, we find that it's pleonexia in the Greek, and it's number 4124, and it means to be eager for gain. You know, so I don't think I have to go into that very much to, um, for you to be able to see that there's still a lot of people who suffers with idolatry. Still a lot of Israelites, a lot of folks in the kingdom that suffers with idolatry. I mean, you know, so hereby we learn that spiritual idolatry is anytime we are eager for gain and we put that eagerness to gain before Yah. You know, we have committed spiritual porn, uh, spiritual idolatry. You know, so you know, um, because you 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 want to get you want to get this new car. You know, and so you know, you may have it Shabbat off, but you say, well, I'm, I'm gonna put some overtime in, I'm gonna work these Shabbats, you know, because I need to gain some extra money so I can get this new car, right? Surely y'all wants me to ride nice, right? I mean, you know, and so you become eager for gain and you begin to put that before the way of Elohim. You know, even though he says, you know, keep my Shabbat holy, you know, you begin to keep his Shabbat for overtime, you know, so that you, because you're eager for gain and you want to gather up some extra monies quicker, you know, so that you can get your new car or what have you. You know, that's a form of idolatry. You know, so whenever we put something before Yah, that's a form of idolatry. And whenever we're eager for gain and we allow that eagerness to get in front of Yah in our life, that's spiritual idolatry. There's a lot of people that's suffering with that principality. You know, and so I want everybody to be clear concerning, you know, principalities. You know, so what I want us to do is reflect on the principalities in our lives. That is the first things that caused us to become pierced or wounded or profaned from a scriptural perspective. You know, what was the first thing in your life that caused you to stray against the word of Elohim? You know, it's a, it's a no-brainer for myself. I know exactly what it, uh, what it was, you know. Uh, my principality was gambling. You know, gambling was my principality. And that was the first thing that caused me to stray from the will of Elohim, you know. But for others, it would be something else. For Israel, it was, it was idolatry, you know. But for you, it may be something else. So, you know, I encourage you to figure out the principalities that's in your life so that you can begin to fight against them. Figure out, you know, and it's important, you know, that you identify these principalities where they help us to understand our weaknesses. You know, additionally, it shows how the enemy will likely come at us knowing it's half the battle, I mean, you know, so once we figure out where these 
principalities lie in our lives, you know, then we can begin to, you know, set up our defenses against them. You know, and this notion can be extended to our immediate families as well as our, as well as our clans. When we look through our family, we may see something that's just traveling through our family. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's diabetes or maybe it's, it's uh, alcoholism or what have you. Then you notice this is a principality that you have to fight against. This is a principality that's coming up against you and your family. You know, so if you enlist in the army of Elohim, then you need to stand in the gap for your family and for those in whom this principality is coming up against. Amen? Amen. You know, so, you know, this is some very serious stuff right here when we're, when we're talking about, you know, um, the army of Elohim and talking about, you know, the enemy. This is some real serious stuff because this is, this is what helps you overcome the enemy. Amen? You know, we need to understand who he is and how he operates, you know, in order to overcome. So, you know, we fight not against flesh and blood, but we do fight against principalities. We fight against those things, you know, that have, you know, been with us the longest, that caused us to stray from the will of Elohim time and time and time and time again. Amen? Even as we see with the principality of idolatry that was in Israel's history where we see time and time and time and time again throughout their history, it caused them to stray from the will of Elohim. Amen? You know, so we need to, uh, we need to understand our enemy. You know, also Ephesians um, um, 6, 12 tells us, you know, that we fight against powers. Well, what is powers? This word powers is exousia in the Greek, number 1489, and it means power of choice. It means power of choice. See, so, you know, this is something else that we fight against. We fight against the liberty of doing as one pleases. Hello, somebody. We fight against the liberty of doing as one pleases. We all wrestle with exousia. That is our free will. Being in such a position makes it easy to come up with all sorts of justifications for things we ought not do. Let us consider... Uh, a few scriptural examples of how exousia or powers can get the best of someone. When we look at 1 Samuel, we see Saul, you know, King Saul was the first king of Israel. You know, the exousias in his life, the powers in his life that came up against him, his liberty. See, when you're king, you have a whole lot of powers against you because you got the freedom to do just about anything you please. Amen? We know, we know King David... You know, this power, the power that came up against him caused them to take Beersheba and kill her, kill her, her husband, Uriah. Amen? Amen? You know, but here it is. We're talking about um, Saul. Let me have my next reader read 1 Samuel 13, 6 through 9, please. When the men of Israel saw that they were in the straits, for the people were distressed, and the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits, and some of the Hebrews went over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. Hallelujah. Now, how many of you know that it wasn't his job to offer that burnt offering? You know, that, that was not his job. Matter of fact, if we continue on, verses uh, 10 through 14 says, And it came to pass that as soon as he made an end of the offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. As <laughs> soon as he got done, you know, that's why I always, you know, you know, try to tell people, hurry up and wait. You know, as soon as he got finished doing wrong, then Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And, and Saul said, Because I saw the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to give God, and I have not made supplication to Yahuwah. So I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Shemuel said unto Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. 
thou hast not kept the commandment of Yahuwah thy Elohim which he commanded thee. For now will Yahuwah have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. See, he was being tested. He just didn't know it. But now the kingdom shall not continue. Yahuwah have sought him a man after his own heart. And Yahuwah have commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which Yahuwah commanded thee. You know, I pray that you can see that this exousia in his life, this power, this freedom to choose, you know, to do what he wanted to do over what Yah said to do, you know, attacked him and got the best of him. Amen? You know, uh, let us uh, consider another example. And this is uh, King Uzziah, you know, uh, 2 Chronicles 26, 16 and 17. You know, it says, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against Yahuwah as Elohim and went into the temple of Yahuwah to burn incense upon the altar of incense. You know, now here it is, you know, again, here it is, he, he, he's doing something that he didn't have the authority to do. Yes, he was free to do it, but it was against the will of Elohim for him to do it. You know, see, there's a lot of things in our lives that we're free to do, but it's against the will of Elohim for us to do it. If we continue on, in verses 18 through 21, it says, And they wrestled, I'm sorry, and they withstood Uzziah the king, and, um, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto Yahuwah, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. This is the one, these are the ones supposed to burn incense. We consecrated to do this. You're not consecrated. Get up out of here. You know, it goes on to say, Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from Yahuwah Elohim. You know, they let him know, you know, uh, uh, under no uh, the shadow of no doubt that, you know, hey, this is not going to be, this is not honorable for you. You're going against the will of Elohim. You know, then Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense while he was wroth with the priest. You know, it's, and this is, this is oftentimes how those powers, they attack you, you know. They attack you, they, they, they get you to do wrong, and then once they get you to do wrong and you called out on it, then you get mad at the people who called you out. Don't it? You ever seen that happen? I'm sure you did. You know, you know, they, that's when people really get boiling mad because you know you call them, you you know, you call them out and they caught. You know, and it says, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of Yahuwah from beside the, the incense altar. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out of thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out, because Yahuwah had smitten him. You know, they didn't have to, you know, really throw him out. He was trying to get out himself. They just helped him alone. And Uzziah the king was a leper until the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of Yahuwah. And Yotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. You know, so as these two kings, we too have many powers, many freedoms to do things we ought not. And it is these powers of freedoms to do wrongly that we're to fight against. They are our enemies. You have to understand that. You have to understand what, you know, I, I know that you've heard many stories about what a principality and what a power is, but this is what the words mean. You know, you know, these principalities are the things that first caused you to stray. These powers are these freedoms that you have. You know, there's no one that's going to be watching you 24-7 but Yah. You know, and but he's not going to stop you from doing wrong. You can choose to do wrong if you like, but you can't choose the consequences that come as a result of that wrongdoing. You know, oftentimes these powers attack our emotions. And as we've seen with Saul, you know, they attack the fear that was in him and, and, and sought to guide his actions. You know, and maybe with Uzziah, maybe it attacked his his his, his uh, sense of, uh, of of devoutness or wanting to get closer to Yah, but he was going about it the wrong way. You know, it doesn't matter how noble your intentions were. See, the powers know that. You know, and they'll fool you into thinking, okay, well, you know, you you doing the right thing. You know, this is noble. You you your intentions are well, but that doesn't matter. Especially when you know what Yah said. You know, so instead of letting these powers, these freedoms to do these things, guide your actions, 
Instead, allow the word of Elohim to guide your choices. Amen. 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 Okay, we also wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world age. Now, let us consider two main rulers of the darkness of this world age. And it's a bad and a false prophet. You know, in Revelation 9, 1 through 5, it tells us about the, um, a bad. How about next reader read Revelation 9, 1 through 5? And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. All right, um, you know, uh, just, just as a side note, you know, I'm low-key about to introduce you to the three top enemies that we all have. You know, the first one is a bad one. You know, and we see here that uh, well, we haven't seen it yet, but we see here that this bottomless pit was opened up and this great smoke came out, you know, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, you know, and see, we're talking about the rules of the darkness of this, of this world, of this age, you know, and out of this darkness of the smoke that darkened the air, you know, locusts came upon the earth. Now, these locusts are simply demons, you know. And we, if we continue on, we see that they had a king, you know. And if we continue on, um, verses 6 through 11, it says, And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle with my soldiers of, in the army of Elohim at. See, because there's a battle coming. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Where's the army of Elohim? Yeah. See, because somebody's going to have to fight them. Amen. And they had tails like on the scorpions, and they were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. And in both tongues, it means destroyer. So what do you think he coming to do? Destroy. Destroy, absolutely. You know, see, this is... This is one of the, the top three. You know, take note where he came out of. He came out of the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit makes reference to the oceans. For um, throughout the course of time, the oceans were thought to be bottomless because man could never reach the bottom. You know, and so that is until now. You know, only through technology now today are they even getting close. But that's another chapter same book. All right, let me have my next reader read Revelations 13, 11 through 17. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth, and then which will therein to worship the first beast, whose daily wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. 
and he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the beast of the image, but the image of the beast rather to be, but the, should be killed. And he called us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, thank you. Now, I want you to see, here, first of all, I want you to acknowledge, where did he come from? Anyone? Out there. Out there. Out the earth, absolutely. So where did, where, where did, where did Apollyon come from? Or a bad? So we have one coming up out of the bottomless pit, out of the, out of the seas, out of the depths of the seas, and we have another one coming out of the earth. Can you see that? All right. You know, now it says that he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. See, this is speaking of the false prophet. You know, he has horns like a lamb, but he spake like a dragon. Why did he speak like like a dragon? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, so it says that he deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. You know, so this this is the false prophet that comes with the lying signs and wonders. And he causes many that would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. You know, so we, um, and if you, and causes all of them small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man may buy or sell. Yeah, this is all the false prophet. This is, this is what he's doing. You know, and he's working in conjunction with a bad that came up out of the depths, right? You know, so here it is, we see one coming up out of the seas and one's coming out of the earth. You know, and they're, they're fighting a war, so the army of Elohim going to have to fight a war, amen? You know, now, let's take a look at, uh, at, at these, these in, um, in action. You know, in Luke 8, 26 through 33, it says, And they arrived at the country of Gadarenes, which is over again, against Galilee, and when he had went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode any in any house, but in the tombs. And when he saw Yahushua, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Yahushua, thou son of Elohim, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. And he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and fetters, and he brake the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Yahushua asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Who's in the deep? About him. Abaddon's in the deep. You know, see, these are, these are his cronies. They besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And then check this out. Yahshua suffered them. And they went, then went the devils out of the man and into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and they were choked. He still got him in the deep. <laughs> Can you see that? You know. But the question is, why did he suffer them to go into the swine? See, because we're talking about unclean spirits. And unclean spirits can only dwell in unclean places. See, and the swine are unclean. So, yes, that's why he suffered them to go into the unclean. And likewise with us. You know, if we're unclean, then... He will suffer them to enter into us as well. Do you hear me now? If we are unclean, then he will allow them to suffer to enter into us as well. See, this is why, you know, people want to throw out Torah. See, but Torah teaches us to be clean and holy. See, without Torah, we don't know what it takes to be clean, and we don't know what it takes to be kadosh. We don't know what it takes to be clean and holy. The only way we're going to remain clean and holy is if we follow Torah. Then 
He won't suffer them to enter into us. Amen? Because we won't be unclean. Now, lastly, we're told that we, we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, Revelation 12, 7 through 10 speaks to this. It says, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. You know, that's the um, army of Elohim. That's our, that's our uh, superiors that's in the heavens above, by the way. You know, they're part of our army too, you know. But there was a war in the heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now is come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim yes. day and night. You know, Satan and his angels are the spiritual wickedness in the heavens that we contend with today. You know, let's take a um, look at, at Job and see, see how, they, how they messed with Job back in his day. You know, Job 1, 6 through 11. Now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahuwah. And Satan came also among them. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered, Yahuwah said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear of Elohim and askew of evil. Then Satan answered Yahuwah and said, do of Job fear Elohim for naught? Is that how you speaking bad on my man? You know, that's what a traducer does. You know, hast not thou made an hedge about him, about his house, and about all that he have on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he have, and he will curse thee to thy face. Yeah. See how that um, spiritual wickedness in high places, see how they, how they get at us? You know, what I want you to understand is that if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for uh, if you know yourself but not the enemy for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. You need to know yourself and you need to know the enemy. You know, Hasatan and his angels there in the heavens, they're causing up all kind of trouble for us. You know. We have a batting in the seas. Did you notice where, uh, well, I already said it, but Satan, where he comes from, he comes from out the heavens, comes from out the air, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a God of the air, we have a God of the earth, and we have a God of the sea, the deaths. These are our three main enemies, you know, that you'll, that you'll find in the end times. You know, so we need to know who they are, but we need to also know how they operate. We need to also know about the principalities, you know, that come up against us. The first things that causes us to stray against the, the will of Elohim. Yeah. We must also know about the powers that come up against us. Our freedom to choose, our freedom to do whatever we want to do, even in lieu of the word of Elohim. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and... We need to know about the rulers of the darkness of this age. You know, we need to know about these unclean spirits and, and how we can keep ourselves from being unclean so that they won't be able to come up against us and, or enter in us and cause havoc. Amen? Amen? And we need to know that there is spiritual wickedness in high places that's also accusing us day and night. Looking, watching our walk, you know, looking for the most minute error so that they can accuse us, so that they can send one of their cronies after us. You know, so if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy for every victory gained, you will also suffer defeat. This is a quote by Sun Tzu, the author of The Art of War. So, three things to die daily to. 
One, the lust of the flesh. Two, the lust of the eyes. And three, the pride of life. You know, I'm going to show you, you know, our master general, our king. Not master general, but our king. You know, our king, Yahushua, on the battlefield when he was upon the earth. On the battlefield and how he worked, how he worked his weaponry. You know, but um, most of all, I want you to see how Satan came at him. You know, because, you know, we need to know how the enemy operates. So I want you to focus in on how Satan came at him. Um, this is Matthew Yahoo 4, 3 through 11. You know, it says, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Elohim, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him, on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou, if thou um, shalt be the son of Elohim, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash a foot against a stone. Yahushua said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not attempt the Adonai thy Elohim. Again, the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain, and show of him all the kingdoms of the world, and the kingdom and the glory kings of the world and the glory of them, and say unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Yahushua, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Adonai thy Elohim, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leave of him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. Now, what I want to point out to you is how the enemy operates. You know, first, he came at Yahshua with the lust of the flesh. He says, if thou be the son of Elohim, command these stones be made bread. You know, why did he come at him with the bread? Because he had just fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was a hundred. You know, so here it is, you know, after 40 days and 40 nights, you're going to be pretty hungry, amen. I mean. You know, so here it is, he was tempting him. He was saying, you know, you the son of Elohim, command these stones be made bread and eat. You know, so he came at him with a lust of the flesh. Next, he come at him with the pride of life. In verse 6, it tells us, it says, and he said, if thou be the son of Elohim, cast thyself down, for it is written, thou, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash a foot against a stone. You know, so this time, you know, he comes at him with the pride of life. You know, you don't, you don't have to worry about that. You know, you don't got to worry about, he's not going to let you die if you were a son. And he even used scripture this time. Did you catch that? You know, but Yahshua came back with scripture. And then there's the lust of the eyes. He came at him with the lust of the eyes. He take him up into an exceeding high mountain and show of him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of him. So he's showing him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of him, you know, and he's trying to tempt his eyes. And he tell him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So I want you to see, you know, how the enemy operates. I want you to understand your enemy. Because he's going to come at you the same way. You know, these principalities, these powers of darkness, you know, the, these rulers of darkness, these power, these principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places, this is how they're going to come at you. They're going to come at you with the lust of the flesh. They're going to come at you with the pride of life, life, and they're going to come at you with the lust of the eyes. This is how they're going to come at you. So you need to know how to, you need to defend these areas in your life. Amen. Amen. First Yoga 9, 2, 15 through 17 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of Elohim abideth forever. This is how we abide forever. James 4, 4 
tells us, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with Elohim? Come on, soldiers. This is enmity with Elohim. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of Elohim. Do you know who your enemy is? Yeah. Matthew Yahoo 16, 21 through 23. From that time forth began Yahushua to show unto his disciples how that he must go into unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. And, and Kephas or Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Adonai, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Kephas, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of Elohim, yeah. but those that be of man. Yeah. So you see, you know, it's all about what Yah says. It's not about what man says. It's not about, you know, the things that look nice. It's about the word of Elohim and what he desires for us. You know, and any time that you begin to savorest not the things that be of Elohim, Satan's using you. You know, and if he can use Kephas, you know, the one that Yah chose to be head of his ecclesia, don't think for a minute he can't use you too. Amen? Because he most certainly can. Romans 8, 3 through 10, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, Elohim sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. See, if we're going to walk after the Ruach, then the righteousness of, of Torah might, should be fulfilled in us. It goes on to say, for they, that are, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Ruach, the things of the Ruach. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Elohim. Okay, we see another enemy, right? Even our own carnal minds. is enmity against Elohim, for it is not subject to the Torah of Elohim, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Elohim. See, this is why we have to be fathered from above. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach. And now so be that the Ruach of Elohim dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Ruach of Mashiach, he is none of his. And if the Mashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Ruach is life because of righteousness. Hallelujah. So if you're still operating in sin, it's only because you're still dead. Hello, somebody. If you're still operating in sin, it's only because you're still dead. Because when you're filled with the Ruach, which is life, then you will begin to do righteously. Amen? So again, Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Principalities are the first things that cause you to become profaned in Yah's eyes, or the first things that cause you to stray from the way of Elohim, that cause you to stray from his way and from his word, his will, his purpose for your life. Powers, you know, that we wrestle against is our own free will, your volition, that is one's freedom to choose. The rulers of the darkness of this world age is another thing that we fight with. It speaks to the gods of this world that rule over the demons and false prophets responsible for the many ways to, to, um, that, that we obtain fame and fortune in the world today, as well as the destruction of many would-be saints. You know, they draw them in with the lust of the eyes and the lust of flesh and with the pride of life. And they're thinking that they're getting something, but in return... You know, they're only, they're only killing themselves. And uh, lastly, we fight against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan and his angels, which are currently in heaven, accusing us before Elohim. You know, so, you know, these are the things. These, these are our enemies. These are our enemies. These is what we fight against. You know, we need to understand who they are, how they operate. You know, because I'm going to leave you with this. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. We want to win and keep winning. We don't want to win and then lose. Win and then lose. Because you get nowhere that way. You find yourself in the same spot. That's all I have for you today. Praise and bless you.